evening fight fans it's friday night and i am happy as ever because uh, work is over we had some great fights last week we've got some great fights coming up this week there's actually a few fights on this card initially you look at home against aldana this uh, this ufc fight night that's coming up on fight island you initial looking at the card it's like huh not a lot there but i promise you there is i promise you there are some there are some really good fights they just have to look for them. Of course, some terrible bets to be made. I'm uh, I'm, I'm having a cheeky drink because it is Friday. My um my beer of of the of the, uh, of the show. What are the odds? What are the odds? That's that's a good question. What are the odds? I'll tell you later on. But first, I want to have a look at uh, UFC two five three. UFC two five three was an outstanding. Uh, I mean the the co-main and the main. The reason, right? They they should be top heavy because those are the those are the fights people want to see, and when they deliver, and boy did they, they really did deliver. Let's talk about Israel Adesanya first up, shall we? I mean, masterclass, wasn't it? I mean, it was an absolute masterclass because he he picked it like he made it look like Costa didn't belong in there with him, and for all intents and purposes, I don't think that Costa really did belong in there with him. I did say before the fight that you look at, you compare their resumes, and it's night and day. Like you, the the list of of people that Adesanya had beaten, I believe it was like Tavares, then um, obviously Gastelum, Anderson Silva, uh, Robert Whittaker, Yoel Romero, you know Derek Brunson as well. Derek Brunson's dangerous as hell. He's 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 beaten a lot of people. So you look at that list, and then you compare it to Costa. Who has beaten what um, Uriah Hall, Yoel Romero, and Johnny Hendricks? That that's it. That's what qualifies as a title challenger now, Johnny. Just because he looks like he, he, he I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. He looks sensational, but it ain't a bodybuilding contest, is it? And Israel showed that. Israel, Israel's like skill was so far ahead of his. And actually, I think Costa knew it. Costa looked like he knew it. That's why he was clowning around. He was clowning around, kind of like. Taunting him just whilst whilst losing the round, just whilst clearly losing the round, just taunting him and trying to get him to come in. It's like it's like what do, do you think that Adesanya is an idiot? Do you think he's just going to go chat like no? He's going to pick you apart like he said he was going to. And uh, yeah, it, it was a great job, like absolute a real masterclass performance. And um, yeah, and I know that it was an easy prediction this one, but I did actually predict that predict just that to happen. So uh, yeah. We'll go to the clip and I'll just uh, have a little drink. What's he doing next? Yeah. yeah, I think that Israel is too technical, he's too good, he's too fast, he's too elusive. He is going to pick Israel Adesanya apart. And no, he's going to pick Paolo Costa apart. I do apologise. Um, yeah, Israel Adesanya by knockout. I'm taking. I think that should have done the clip by now. Uh, yeah, also the whiskey I'm drinking today. I've gone back to my old favourite. Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare is an outstanding whiskey. Just outstanding. Just uh, dropping my phone there. Uh, you know, technical difficulties. But yeah, uh, Eagle Rare is an outstanding bourbon. Honestly, if you enjoy bourbon, uh, check out Eagle Rare. It's really very good. In, in this this humble alcoholic's opinion. So yeah. So like I say, yeah. No. Normally, uh, my terrible bets are just that they are. But that that was that prediction. It was a fairly easy prediction. Uh, it was always going to happen. I think. I don't think there was really any uh, any other way that fight was going to go. Now, uh, the P there's been a little bit of controversy about the end of the fight. Now, some people that they seem to have been getting a little bit butt hurt about uh, Israel Adesanya's actions after the fight. So I'm not really sure. So basically, yeah, bring it up here. Uh, so this guy's saying, uh, "I hate how Izzy dry hump Costa after uh, dry hump Costa after he won." Um, I mean, it's not the best uh, best constructed sentence there. Most well constructed says me constructing a sentence poorly. So shut my mouth, right? So yeah, it's, it, even as a fan of Adesanya, I, I can admit it pissed me off. He won, and there was no need to do that. I would disagree, actually. I disagree, and actually, I, I'll put my put my response up here. You know, actually, I was fine with it. Look, because the Costa, he talked some mad shit before that fight, right? And if you talk that kind of mad shit, then there is every chance your opponent might rub it in a little bit. 
pun intended, might rub it in a little bit uh, when he beats your ass as convincingly as he did there. Um, look, at the end of the day, like, as I say in my, in my response here, uh, I'm fine with it because it was Costa that was the one that insisted on making the whole fight contentious, right? Then he starts crying because Adesanya did some taunting after he, wi after he won. You know, you reap what you sow. Perhaps if Acosta had spent less time making hilarious skits with um, it getting somebody to run away from him around the octagon and pretending that that guy was Israel Adesanya, if he'd have spent less time doing that and more time focusing on how to actually get inside against Adesanya and use some of the power that he's so famous for, then maybe the result of the fight would have been different. But... No, no, I think he had that coming. Uh, I see, I see no problem with Israel Adesanya's uh, actions after that fight, and um, yeah. So um, the other thing that we've seen a lot of is people have been questioning whether whether Adesanya has been taking PEDs or not. Now uh, this gentleman here, uh, I've got um, this picture up. If you seriously think Adesanya is not doing PEDs. You're as much on drugs as when people thought Lance Armstrong was Lance Armstrong was natural. Now, again, like, I mean, these are like Facebook forums, uh, like in the UFC uh, Facebook group. So uh, yeah, you don't get the best um, English or grammar, but you know, I see what I see what he's saying. But I think it's just it's because basically his his left pec had a bit of like a droop in it, a gyno. Uh, I forget what it's called, but either way, apparently it's like systematic of of steroid abuse, but it is also a result of uh, of weight cuts. There, weight cuts. There's loads of things that can cause that. So when people are just automatically jumping on and just assume, like this guy, this guy, he's out, he's out of his he's out of his mind. If I'm honest, right? He's out of his mind. If if, if he hasn't tested positive in his entire career and he hasn't tested positive to this day, then well, I don't see there's any reason to say like that. Oh, if you seriously think the understanding is not doing PEDs, then like trying to in, like allude to the fact that. That he definitely is doing PDs. I don't think that there's really any evidence of that, and um, it's, I think it's, it's some people are just trying to take away from uh, Adesanya's very convincing win. But one person that is uh, is is not making any excuses, Mr. John Jones. Mr. John Jones has piped up again. This is his tweet up here, right? Gold. Absolute gold, my God! Uh, I do love it when John when John Jones is trying to get on to, under somebody's skin. I absolutely love it. Now, do I think that this is a matchup that they should make? I mean, probably not. To be fair, I mean, like Adesanya is a middleweight. I don't think it does anything for um, for Jones's career if he fought Adesanya and won. I mean, it would do a lot for Adesanya's career if Adesanya was to fight John Jones and then beat him. Yeah, that that's great. That's a great upside for him. I don't see why John Jones wants that fight particularly. But yeah, I just love it. I'm going. I'm going to the next anime convention and slapping the first ten people I see. Do you know what I mean? It's just. It, it's just. That's vintage John Jones. I bloody love it. Do you know what I mean? And you know what? I don't think that fight will happen. But would I watch it? Hell yeah, I'd watch it. Who do? Who would win that? I, you gotta go with John Jones. I mean, I, you just gotta feel like he would be the bigger guy going in, and that uh, he would just. Yeah, I th I've, you've, got, you've got to feel like it'd be John Jones's fight. I mean, you never know though, because Israel, Israel's like Israel's striking looks so good. He, he's just on a level above most people. Is he on a level above John Jones? Well, we don't know. Um, I think John Jones, being the bigger guy, he's he hovers for he's 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 in the bracket of of light heavyweight going up to heavyweight, not light heavyweight going down to middleweight. Whereas Israel Adesanya is in the bracket of of middleweight going up to light heavyweight. Do you, do you see what I mean? You know, it, they, there's just a certain thickness. I, I, I do think that John Jones would be too big and too skilled. Uh, because I'm not saying he's definitely more skilled than Adesanya. Uh, especially not on the feet. I think that's probably debatable. However, um, if you've got two guys that are similar skill sets, the bigger guy will win, usually, nine times out of ten. If they're similar skill sets, uh, skill levels... Uh, the one with the size advantage will usually come out with the victory. That is, that's just a fact. It's, it, it happens. happens. Um, but uh, closing um, my section on, on on how good Israel Adesanya was, I do think that Paolo Costa definitely does need to stop making excuses, and he's not, he needs to stop crying. Look at look at this look at this picture of this guy. Like he, he did this video talking about how um, how he didn't see 
Israel uh, doing his dry humping thing after the fight. He didn't see it initially and how he thinks he's a piece of trash move. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, look, Costa, I don't know who told you to make that video, mate, but it's not a good look. You know what I mean? He sits there going about going about how, oh, you know, something happened before the fight and that, uh, but I do, I know not make excuses. Like, you just did! You just, I hate it when people say, look, I don't make excuses, but something happened before the fight. You just made an excuse! J right, just then! Just then! You just did it! Just accept the loss. Accept that Israel was better, right? And not just better on the night either, because, man, the skill levels looked worlds apart. Worlds apart. Costa has got some real work to do if he wants to compete with Israel Adesanya. Like, he just does, right? And like, and he needs to accept that rather than making angry, butthurt videos about how, no, I am angry. Now I will knock your head off. No, that's easy to say. One day removed after you've recovered. Have you forgotten that quickly how badly he owned you? He, he, look, if they do that rematch, it's just, it's just going to be a laughing stock. I'm sorry, Costa, but you need to go go back, beat some people, and then and then maybe work his way back to a title shot. Stop focusing on all the fun and games. Because the thing is, right, is you're, you're getting upset about that. You were the one that started like, the whole beef. Like, Israel Adesanya is, doesn't really have a history of trash-talking his opponents before he gets in there with him. Not really. It, it really went to another level with you because you decided to make it contentious. And that was on you, not anyone else. And to sit there and get butthurt about, about that aspect of it and say how, yeah, in the rematch, I will be coming for you. It's like, no, there's not going to be a rematch, at least not now. That was so one-sided. Do you understand? That was so one-sided. And, yeah, that's that's all I've got to say on that matter. You know, I wish Costa all the best. I think the division needs guys like Costa. But I feel like he's he's suffering from the old... Um, for, from the old Vitor Belfort syndrome, where he knew that he was outmatched. He 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 mentally beaten himself before he was. He looked he looked like after that first round he knew that he was completely outgunned, and he needs to like because he's again it's, it's like Vitor. Vitor would just go in there and just smash people, and when he wasn't able to do that, he would crumble mentally, and that's what happened here. It did, do you know, because the skill levels there was too big of a disparity, too big of a disparity. And, uh, yeah, anyway, moving on from that fight, I would also like to say a big, big congratulations to Mr. Jan Blakovic. Mr. Jan, what, what a sensational performance. What a sensational performance. You've got to give it up for the guy. 37 years old, he's been fighting forever. He comes in and beats it, and, and he was a big underdog as well. He was 3.25 against, which I thought was a tad disrespectful. I did think that Reyes should have been the favourite, but not by that much. And as I said last week, that I, Joey, I, I thought that exactly this would happen. Had a feeling in my bones. Play the clip. And Blakovic, right, he has got some scary power, especially in his short punches. Right, you know, he's, he, he, he's just, he's so strong. And he's got, like, like I said, just ridiculous one-punch power. He's got that, he's got that gift where he, if he touches you, he can put you out on any given night. My gut tells me that's what's going to happen. That, that's... That's my prediction. I think Blackwich by by knockout. No, yeah, like I said, uh, again, I don't often get these right. I do call them terrible bets for a reason. But god damn, yeah, I was happy. I was a happy boy on a Sunday morning when I watched this with my with my bacon sandwich, and my coffee. Uh, I was a happy boy because I yeah I was I had, I had some money in my betting account for a change. Happy days. Um, I don't know why Jones is so focused on Israel Adesanya because he's got a bona fide. It, um, I think uh, I think Blackovich has pointed out in a couple of interviews since that you know it, the fact remains that um, whilst like John Jones vacated the belt, there is an argument. For, if if Reyes had won, it's kind of like well, look, Jones beat Reyes, and I don't want to hear this whole oh, but Reyes won. No, he didn't. He didn't win, right? Because the the thing is. He left it in the hands of the judges. He didn't do enough to beat the champion, right? Because that third round, it was, it was round number three that was the closest, right? And in those rounds, you have to give it to the champion. There is such a thing as a championship advantage. There has to be. In order to beat the champion, to take that belt, you have to take it. You have to take it. You can't just 
equal the champion, right? So I don't think Reyes won that fight. I don't think there's an argument to be made for that. And, and either way, he didn't. He didn't win the fight. On that night, he, he, got, he got the loss. So Jones would have beaten that guy. But Jones has never fought Blakovich. Blakovich and Jones have never fought. So there is an argument to be had that that's the next fight to make. So I think Jones needs to stop chasing Israel, Israel Adesanya, to be fair. But uh, yeah, Polish power all the way. Big up Jan Blakovich. Lovely job. Sterling job, mate. Cage Warriors Trilogy. A little shout out to a few guys in the Cage Warriors Trilogy. They had three events back to back. Really good events, actually. If you can go back and watch them, they're on Fight Pass. Some really entertaining fights. Uh, big special shout out to Luke Shanks. Luke Shanks, local boy uh, from Wellingborough, Northampton area. Uh, he used to train at uh, BSC, I think. He's, he's, um, he, he put on a phenomenal performance. Uh, flyweight, a flyweight title fight. He was the challenger. Uh, fighting this guy who's actually really good uh, in Fadim. He's, he's, um, yeah, he, he just he shut him down. He made him look amateurish. He just did whatever he wanted for five rounds. Great performance. Beautiful. And I can't wait to see, see him fight again and uh, defend that belt. I'm hoping to go and see him in person uh, at some point because uh, I was supposed to go and watch that fight with a few people. But hopefully sometime in the future we'll see Luke defending that belt or another belt. I mean, he looked, he looked class. He really did. So he'll either be defending that belt or maybe another belt in another organisation. Who knows? But congratulations, Luke Shanks. Wonderful. Great stuff. Also, Mason Jones. Mason Jones. What's you know? Where, where's the where's the limit for this guy? He's um, currently the lightweight and welterweight champ. He went up to welterweight to fight the number one contender, captured that belt as well. So he's the champ, champ. Uh, I think he's undefeated, like ten and zero now or nine and zero. Uh, black belt in kickboxing, black belt in jiu-jitsu, black belt in judo. He's got black belts out the wazoo. Black belts all over the place. This could could be the uh, the first big guy to really. To really put Wales on the map in MMA, if he goes over to the UFC and continues to dominate in the fashion that he is dominating in uh, Cage Warriors. But that remains to be seen. Mason Jones. Mark that name down, ladies and gentlemen. Wait until you see him in the UFC, because I should imagine it won't be long. So, let's have a look at the news here. So, we've got a weird bit of news. Like, for some reason, it seems like Dan Hardy is vying for the fight with Nick Diaz. I would watch that all day. I would watch that all day. Tell you what, Dan Hardy believes he's got more polished skills. Um, ooh, uh, maybe. The uh, thing is, Dan Hardy's a hell of a striker. And Nick Diaz has been out for a while. And I'll tell you what, that is a fight that I would watch. I would watch the hell out of that fight. Dan Hardy coming back out of retirement. Nick Diaz coming back out of retirement. It's kind of a fair fight. Both strikers, both going to throw down. Both gobby. It's going to be fun. That'll be a fun fight. I'll, I'll watch the hell out of that. I really hope they make that fight. Like it's just something that I saw. I was like, "Ha, huh, yeah, that's good. That's interesting." McGregor versus Poirier too. Are they doing it? Are they not? Is it for charity? Is it for free? It is. Uh, who the fuck cares? Jesus Christ! Just make a fight. Just make a fight already. And also, Poirier, um, you said that the money wasn't right against Tony, but then you take you take a, a charity fight for no money against Connor. Doesn't make sense. You're saying the money wasn't right, but then you go and do a fight for free. So that's, I don't know. Uh, uh, well, what are you thinking there? Just You should have taken the fight with Tony. Do you know what I mean? You've gotten paid and probably beaten Tony. And then, you know, then you're next in line for the, for the title again. Who knows? But taking a fight for free when you've just turned down a fight because there wasn't that much, because there wasn't enough money involved. Have a day off. But either way, I, I don't know who, I don't know the contract negotiations, but either way. That, that's that's my view on it. It's like, look, from, from the surface, I don't know all the ins and outs, but maybe there's something in the background. Of I guess there's a lot of publicity with a kind of fight, charity or not. But, ha! Huh, yeah, I don't know. So, now we'll move on to my new segment I'm going to do every week, and that is Facebook Troll of the Week. So, Facebook Troll of the Week, number one. A, Adesanya for a cool-headed Costa. This pissed off version knocks Adesanya's head clean off his shoulders, give him the rematch. That's some good trolling. This guy in the UFC group, he does a lot of trolling. He's, he's kind of a troll account, I think. But, he's, but honestly, he says some shit that is funny. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Because it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, he just, I don't know, he just comes out with some things that I just think it, that, that say, people take seriously. And I'm like, well, he's just fishy. He's trolling, isn't he? You know? But it is funny. It's like, because it's the whole motivated Connor beats uh, Khabib, beats Khabib every time. Which brings me on to my next Facebook troll, right? 
This guy says, a motivated Costa beats Izzy every time. Love it. Little callback there to the whole McGregor thing, because everyone keeps on saying, oh, a motivated McGregor beats, beats, um, beats, beats Khabib, which, of course, as we all know, is just preposterous. <laughs> but yeah, I like it. I like that one. And then we've got troll number three. And it's the same guy that did the, um, the cool-headed uh, Costa, angry Costa thing. But is... Israel Adesanya ready? So now that he's beaten Costa, right? Do you think he's ready for the Sugar Show? Do you, do you think he's ready for the Sugar Show? I think he's ready for the Sugar Show. <laughs> I'd pay to see that. See what? Out of those three, which one do you think? To, let me know in the comments, right? We'll, uh, I tell you, it, I, I want to see just who who thinks that which one's the best troll. Me personally, I'm voting for the simple one, the nice simple. A motivated Costa beats Izzy every time. I like it. It's simple. It has a callback to other jokes that have been made. It's it's got. It, there's very little fat on that. I enjoy that. It's 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 it says all it needs to say. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna vote for that one. But by all means, in the comments, let me know uh, which one you think is is uh, Facebook troll of the week, and uh, I'll announce it on next week's show. There we go. So yeah, there's a there's a lot of Facebook trolling. So. Moving on to the terrible bets for this week. Now, this week, uh, it's home against Aldana. Now, it, like, on the surface, like I said, they, the, I, I, the, it's not the the most stacked fight card in the world, but there are some there there are some good fights on here actually. But I'll start off with the odds for home against Aldana. Now, uh, you've got home with the win at one point eight three. You've got uh, the the submission at seventeens. And you've got the decision at 250s. I don't know why I haven't got the knockout in there, but I'll um, I'll find that later on. But either way, I think it's probably going to be a decision for Holly Home. Uh, well, possibly a knockout. I don't know. But either way, I've got the odds up there. You've got the... Um, her opponent... It's, it, I don't really know much about her, if I'm totally honest. But, yeah, I think a safe bet there is probably Holly Home by knockout. But... More likely a decision. A lot of these ones go to a decision because they're, they're, it's, unless Holly Holm lands one of her patented big kicks. Holly Holm is entertaining, do you know what I mean? and, I'll, and, and I will watch it. But the fight that's caught my eye, the fight that has caught this man's eye is Court McGee against Carlos Condit. Now this one is for like some of the older fans. Like Court McGee, I remember him. He was um, on one of the Chuck Liddell. Well, well. The Ultimate Fighters, where Chuck Liddell, I think, was one of the coaches. Because or either that, or he trains with uh, John Hackelman, and um, and that's where I'm getting confused. But either way, Court McGee, he's been around a little while now, and he has lost to every big name. Well, he has He's lost to a lot of people. They're not even names. That's the thing. But basically, we've got the odds up here, right? You've got Court McGee to win 1.73. He's the favourite. Not really sure why. Knockout 8.50. Sub, 850. Decision, 2.38. Now, Court McGee does decision most people if he does win. So, that stands to reason. 2.38 is fine. Now, you've got Carlos Condit to win, 2.10. Okay, he's a slight underdog. Not not too bad. Knockout, 6.5. Submission, 8. And decision, 3.5. Now, I do get it, right? Because, okay, whilst Court McGee has lost to a lot of people, he's coming off a lot of losses, Carlos has lost his last five fights, right? But those five were against, with no disrespect to Court McGee, though, those five fights were arguably against higher calibre opponents than Court McGee. You know what I mean? Because he lost to Lawler, Meyer, Magny, Oliveira, and then Michael Chisera. They're all pretty high up the food chain when it comes to mixed martial arts and the welterweight division. Whereas... Like, you know, you look at Court McGee, he's, he's fought, with respect, nobody's in that division, and um, he's lost six out of his last eight. I don't see Court McGee beating Carlos Condit, which is why, and Carlos Condit is a finisher. He is a finisher. Do you know what I mean? He finishes most of his opponents, right? Because uh, it's, it, it, the ones that he wins... Look, he's got 30 wins, right? Let's put this in perspective. Uh, Carlos Condit has got 30 wins. 15 knockouts, 13 submissions. So I am taking the double chance. Double chance for Condit to get the finish. TKO, knockout or submission. 3.75 to 1. I'm taking that all day. All day, baby. That is a license to print money right there. 
That is a license to print money. Next fight, co-main event. Right? Because that Carlos Condit fight, McCourt McGee fight, that's the prelim headliner. Just FYI. Catch the prelims for that. Because that, that's going to be a good fight. It's going to be fun to see the natural born killer back. And I think he gets back in the win column. By a finish as well. But like that's a terrible bet. You know, if it's betting on someone who's had five losses in a row. Fucking moron. Either way. The next fight I'm looking at is uh, Jürgen De Castro against Carlos Felipe. Now this is a heavyweight fight. And we love the heavyweights right here at the Burt Locker. We love the heavyweights. Now... This young De Castro, he knocked out. He's four of his six wins are from first round knockouts. He does these walk off KOs, and that is what I think is happening here. Odds we've got up here: De Castro to win 1.44, knockout two. You've got submission at 13s. You've got decision 4.50, and uh, round one TKO knockout is 3.50. That's where I think this one is headed, but. Anything can happen in the heavyweight division, so I think it might be worth even making a, taking a quick look at Carlos Felipe, who to win is 2.75, the submission is 10, knockout 5 to 1, a heavyweight, that's good, it's good odds. Decision is 7, but realistically, my prediction, first round, walk off, knockout for Jurgen De Castro, and we've got another heavyweight contender here on our hands. This guy's good, I, I do like him, he's entertaining, he lost to Greg Hardy, but... You can forgive that, you know, Greg Hard is a hell of an athlete. But those are my terrible bets for this weekend. And uh, right now, I'm going to go ahead and, because uh, I'm recording this Friday night, I've recorded the uh, Jets against the Broncos. So I'm going to watch the Jets get battered by the Denver Broncos. And uh, it's fun being a Jets fan because at least you know they're going to lose. But uh, we'll be looking at how my bets panned out on the home and Aldana card. Uh, next week. Until then, keep those odds long and those bets terrible.